Chapter 29, referring to the second day of creation before the creation of human beings, says that one from out of the order of the angels, or according to other versions of second Enoch, chapter 20 and second Enoch, one of the order of archangels, or one of the ranks of the archangels, conceived an impossible thought <clears throat> to place his throne higher than the clouds above the earth. that he might become equal in rank to the Lord's power. And the Lord threw him out of the height, from the height, out from the height with his angels. And he was flying in the air continuously above the bottomless. In this chapter, the name Satanel is mentioned only in a heading added in a single manuscript, which is a representative of the longer recension and was used in the English translation by R.H. Charles. Third Enoch. Third Enoch mentions only those three fallen angels called Azazel, Azza, and Uzza, similar to the first book of Enoch. They taught sorcery on earth, causing corruption. Unlike the first book of Enoch, there is no mention of the reason for their fall. And according to Third Enoch 4 6, they also later appear in the heaven, objecting to the presence of Enoch. Too many people get involved. I don't get involved in Enoch. There's too many discrepancies. And you're going to get your mind uh, combining the two thoughts of uh, conflicting thoughts in the Bible with Third Enoch, and then start editorializing with your own mind. Don't expose your mind to this. Just investigate yourself. Find out if Enoch has enough flaws in it not to be considered scripture, and I think it does. So it's not scripture. Master the Bible first. Don't start critiquing Enoch, especially if you haven't mastered the Bible because that'll just contaminate thoughts in your own mind, and they'll come up, because some of them are so bizarre, and contradictory among themselves. Similar to the first book of Enoch, they taught sorcery on earth, third Enoch, causing corruption, these three angels. Unlike the first book of Enoch, there is no mention of the reason for their fall, and according to the third Enoch 4.6, they also later appear in the heaven objecting to the presence of Enoch. All this stuff is nonsense. Somebody's did an authorial work. A lot of people. For example, look at Joseph Smith. He, he wrote the, uh, the the Book of Mormon. He stole it and editorialized it and uh, claimed it his own and millions go along with it despite all the contradictory stuff. You talk to Mormons, if you have a little bit of knowledge of the Book of Mormon, uh, they have answers for everything, but they can't. They get angry when, they, uh, when you show them contradictions within their own books. Four, point four, the Book of Jubilees. What is this? The Book of Jubilees all refers to the watchers who are among the angels created on the first day. However, unlike the first book of Enoch, the watchers are commanded by God to descend to earth and to instruct humanity. It is only after they copulated with human women that they transgressed the laws of God. These illicit unions resulted in demonic offspring who battled each other until they died, while the watchers were bound in the depths of the earth as punishment. In Jubilees 10.1, another angel called Mastima <coughs> refers to the watchers. He, look at the, the Book of Mormon on this, too. He also asks God to spare some of the demons so that so he might use their aid in, to lead humankind into sin. Wow. Afterwards, he becomes their leader. Lord Creator, let some of them remain before me. Let them hearken to my voice and do all that I say unto them. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. Why? For these are for corruption and leading astray before my judgment. For great is the wickedness of the sons of men. <clears throat> Unlike in the first book of Enoch, although the existence of supernatural evil is affirmed, evil is not introduced first by the fall of the angels. <clears throat> Further, the fallen angels and demons seem to have no power independent from God, but only act within his framework. Okay, the origin of demons. Angels mating with humans is against God's commands and is a cursed action, resulting in the wrath of God coming upon earth. It is contended by some that demons originate from the evil spirits of the giants that are cursed by God to wander the earth until their final judgment. However, the Bible indicates angelic beings were around at the beginning of creation. Many people assume that fallen angels are the same as demons. I don't believe this is true for several reasons. My points here against this, 
Actually, this contradicts God's judgment upon all of humanity, except for Noah and his family. There is a question of God's sovereignty and judgment. Should God have let the spirits of the hybrid humans continue to possess humans and do even more evil than they had in the world before the flood? The most common alternate explanation for the origin of demons is that when the Nephilim of Genesis 6 were destroyed the flood, their disembodied souls became the demons. While the Bible still does not specifically say what happened to the souls of the Nephilim when they were killed, it is unlikely that God would destroy the Nephilim in the flood only to allow their souls to cause even greater evil as the demons. The most biblically consistent explanation for the origin of the demons is that they are the fallen angels, the angels who rebelled against God and Satan, with Satan, not and. So the angels who rebelled against God with Satan. First, fallen angels are much more powerful than demons. That has not been proved by Scripture. The ranks of angelic beings have different powers. We're told by Jesus to cast out demons, yet Jude cautions us in our confrontations with fallen angels, he says. Jude 1, 8 to 9. In the same very way, these dreamers slander celestial beings. Jude 1 and 9. But even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to bring a slanderous accusation against him, but said, Lord, the Lord rebuke you. It is maintained that it is proper to rebuke demons, but not fallen angels. Note that it is the devil, Satan, who Jude declares the archangel Major Michael did not dare accuse not all demonic angels. And goes on to say, fallen angels have their own celestial bodies, therefore they have no need to inhabit bodies. There may be other reasons for the fallen angels to possess human beings, human bodies like to control them toward their own evil de ends of challenging the sovereignty of God. Yet demons seek bodies desperately, and, if need be, they will settle for the bodies of animals, Mark 5, 12, 13, perhaps to do it for evil to challenge the sovereignty of God. Fallen angels have the ability to fly, but demons can only walk. Jesus said, says, concerning demons, when the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Demons walk, fallen angels fly. My point, the language walk through dry places is figurative. They move as spirit beings can move. The demons are the powers of this dark world, while fallen angels are the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. My point against this, the demonic angels are occupied with limitations both the heavenly and earthly realms. The expanse of the heavens is more than the third heaven. Paul differentiates, the author goes on to say, between these two classes of being, for our struggle is not against flesh, and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 6, 12. There is not no sense here. There's no sense here that there is a differentiation between two classes of beings. The demonic angels occupy both, unless specifically stipulated in scripture, Enoch's writings are not inspired. Disembodied Spirits From the facts of the Bible concerning demons, there are disembodied spirits. They once had bodies, but lost them. This explains why they hunt for bodies. They crave bodies to, to inhabit. Many ministers have understood the difference between fallen angels and demons, but they haven't figured out where they came from. Most of them have speculated that demons are the disembodied spirits of a pre-Adamic race, although they can't prove this from the Bible or from tradition. I haven't answered this yet. I can answer this right away. The assumption there is no pre-Adamic race. All humanity descends from the first man and woman of creation. It's clear in first Genesis chapter one, two, three. I believe since demons are evil spirits that we must confront, God must have told us about them. Surely, 
He doesn't leave us without telling us where they came from. I believe the Bible definitely informs us as to the origins of demonic spirits. What one believes is not necessarily true. We must not impose upon the Bible what is not there. Believe that. Nephilim. So what are demons? Demons are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim who are mentioned in Genesis 6. The Nephilim are the offspring of fallen angels and humans. The Nephilim are, were destroyed in the flood, yet their spirits remained on the earth. Note, if their spirit souls remained on the earth, the cause continue, to cause continuance, A-N-C-E, to do evil, of evil, I guess I could say of evil, Come, uh, somebody called them. Then, what was the purpose of God destroying them in the flood? If this view is the oldest belief among the Jewish people. Who cares? They've had scripture around. It is a belief that the apostles held to as well. Let me prove why I believe this. We don't care what you believe, but you, can you prove from scripture? The giants who are born from the union of the spirits and the flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth because their dwelling shall be upon the earth and inside the earth. Evil spirits have come out of their bodies because of, from the day that they were created. This is not in the Bible. From the sons of God, they became watchers. Their first origin is the spiritual foundation. They will become evil upon the earth and they shall be called evil spirits. The dwelling on these of the spiritual billing, beings on earth, of earth is heaven. But the dwelling of the spirits of the earth, which are born upon the earth, is in the earth. That's the first edict, but it's not biblical. The passage sounds like it came from Greek mythology, but this should not surprise us because another name for evil, evil spirits is the demon, and the word demon comes from the Greek mythology. E.W. Vines will confirm this. Now, his book, his work, Expository Dictionary, is not biblical. He writes all the time. He writes concerning the Greek word daimon, which is translated demon in the New Testament as being derived from, among pagan Greeks as an inferior deity. Not in the Bible. Who cares what pagans say? Nephilim, when men began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God, fallen angels, saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be 120 years. And the Nephilim, offspring of these unions, were on the earth in those days. And also afterward, when the sons of God, fallen angels, went to the daughters of men and had children by them, they were the heroes of old, men of renown. We're talking about Greek mythology and other mythologies. The name Nephilim means giants. The union of the sons of God, fallen angels, and the daughters of men produce a race of giants. Remember Zeus? This scripture is written in a literary technique called Hebrew parallelism, which means that the identical thing is said in two different ways. This means morning star, stars are the same as sons of God. Satan once was called the morning star, the, the son of the morning star, meaning the having and the characteristics of a morning star. Lucifer is an angel of light, which identifies him with the angels. It was among the morning stars that sang for joy when God created the universe. All the angels are also called the sons of God. Demons are the spirits of the Nephilim, half human and half angel. Notice the Nephilim were on the earth in those days. Those days were the days preceding the flood. However, Genesis also says that they were on the earth afterward. In other words, they were on the earth after the flood. Genesis 7.21 says that all men perished in the flood, so how could they have survived the flood? Let's go back to Genesis 6, 4. The Nephilim were on the earth after the flood. Their bodies were destroyed by the flood, but their spirits remained. Genesis 6, 4. Let me see. Well, let's just take a look at Genesis 6, 4. Blow this up a little bit. Genesis 6, 4. 